Welcome, dear friends, dear spiritual seekers, dear practitioners of Bhakti Yoga, and all intelligent people who have important questions about life in this world. My name is Prima Manjari Devidasi, and I'm practitioner of Bhakti Yoga for past 30 years. And I like to share some precious jewels of ancient wisdom from the yoga textbooks. So in today's video, we will actually discover what is the psychology of real happiness, or even to be more precise, what is the psychology of a real enjoyer? Are you curious to know? So I will explain first, what is the source? What is the real source of all pleasure? And then uh, the second, how to actually obtain this pleasure? How to actually taste this pleasure? And this gives us the psychology of a real enjoyer. So I will start with the text from the ancient Vedas. And this is a book which is called Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, chapter 10, verse number 6. And uh, I will just read a short portion of the purport because this is what is really important for us. And, um, okay. So before I read this uh, very, very sacred book, I will just offer my respects. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Because this book actually contains very authoritative, scientific, spiritual knowledge that can completely transform everyone's heart and life. So uh, in this purport, we can read, everyone is after some pleasure or humor of enjoyment, but does not know the supreme source of all attraction. Raso vai saha, rasam hevayam labdvandi bhavati. This is in Sanskrit language. The Vedic hymns inform everyone about the supreme source of all pleasure. The unlimited fountainhead of all pleasure is the personality of Godhead. And one who is fortunate enough to get this information through transcendental literatures like Srimad Bhagavatam becomes permanently liberated to occupy his proper place in the kingdom of God. So this is amazing, amazing um, purport commentary that really reveals a great secret. And before speaking more on this, I would just like to offer my respects to my spiritual teacher, uh, actually teachers, and invoke their blessings and mercy so that I can say something uh, that will be inspiring and meaningful for you. Omagyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shi guru namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual master who illuminated my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge while I was blinded in the darkness of ignorance. So here in this um, verse, we actually have the quotation from the ancient Vedic hymn. And uh, this is the very essence is raso vai saha, which means that the supreme, the absolute truth, the supreme Lord is the source of all pleasure or rasa. 
the source of all happiness. And uh, this um, pleasure has incredibly sweet taste. And therefore, we can say, actually, that the Supreme Absolute Truth or the Supreme Lord is extremely sweet. And his main, his the most uh, prominent name is Krishna, which actually means the most attractive one. So he's the most beautiful, the most attractive, and the most sweet personality. And, uh, of course, now the question we already discovered, <laughs> where is the source of all pleasure? It is in this supreme personality. But now the question is, but how can we enjoy this pleasure, which is contained within this supreme person? This may be the question that um, we may ask. So... In order to answer this question, I will read another quote from another ancient uh, sacred book, which is called Chaitanya Charitamrita. And this is Adi Lila, chapter 6, text number 103. Sweetness of Lord Krishna is not to be tasted by those who consider themselves equal to Krishna. It is to be tasted only through the sentiment of servitude. So this is something amazing because there are not so many people who are inclined towards spiritual life. But even if they are, especially here in the West, the majority of such people will try some kind of impersonalistic path of spiritual advancement to achieve the goal of impersonal liberation. But right now, we could actually read that by this, one cannot achieve this supreme pleasure or happiness. Although the happiness of the impersonal liberation is called Ananda, Brahmananda, it's still very insignificant. And it is actually explained in another text, also Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter 6, text 44. The conception of servitude to Sri Krishna generates such an ocean of joy in the soul that even the joy of oneness with the Absolute, if multiplied 10 million times, cannot compare to a drop of it. So that is the comparison between the impersonal revelation and the uh, joy or happiness that one can achieve by it and the ultimate happiness and enjoyment that one can taste if one develops the servitude attitude towards the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, who is the source of all sweetness, the source of all bliss, the source of all pleasure. And now I would like to tell you something even more amazing. And this is completely, completely amazing. In these ancient scriptures, it is actually uh, explained in great detail uh, all the science of Godhead. It is actually explained that the Supreme Absolute Truth actually has innumerable expansions. And they are all in the category of Godhead. So with other words, they are all God. They are all God. But you know what is the greatest mystery, the greatest secret of all these other forms of Godhead? Each and every one of them has the psychology of servitude towards that one supreme absolute truth, 
Shri Krishna. And in that attitude of servitude and with this emotion of I'm the servant, they experience unlimited joy. They experience more happiness, more bliss than they experience as being the God himself. And even more, which is even more confidential knowledge of the Godhead, the science of God is that the supreme absolute truth, Sri Krishna, cannot experience this ultimate sweetness and pleasure and happiness. Why? Because he cannot serve himself. And because this ultimate sweetness and pleasure can be experienced only by a person who serves him. And this is why he himself also appears as a devotee of himself, as a servitor of himself. And then in this way, in this incarnation, you can say, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he can actually taste the unlimited bliss and happiness and enjoyment of his own source of all pleasure. So this is a great secret. And now, why I'm telling you all this? I'm telling you all this because Every one of us is a spiritual being. We are all souls. And according to our constitutional position, we are all infinitesimal parts and parcels of the supreme absolute truth. And as tiny little particles and parcels of him, we are naturally, by our constitutional position, his servants. So our real position towards him is servitude, service. But unfortunately, at this point, every single one of us who are here in this world, we have actually abandoned that position and this has been covered over our real understanding of who we are and what is our real constitutional position. And here in this world, we are playing the role of the supreme enjoyer as if we are the person who is enjoying. This is the psychology of enjoyment in this world. I am the enjoyer and everything what is here in this world is meant for my enjoyment. And in this way, we are trying to be happy. But unfortunately, is this successful? No, it is not. And in Bhagavad Gita as it is, we actually can um, read why is this not, why we can actually not be happy, why we actually cannot really enjoy in this world in the way that we are all accustomed to do. And this is amazing text from the uh, fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita as it is, text 22. And Sanskrit is also amazing. Yehi samsparsha ja boga dukkha yonaya evate adhyantavanta kante ya nateshu ramate buddha. And the translation goes, an intelligent person does not take part with the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and the end. And so the wise man does not take delight in them. So this verse is actually 
giving us the essential understanding of why the enjoyment and pleasure and happiness in this material world does not actually give us what it promises us to give. We may get some little taste, we may get some little nectar in the beginning, but then it turns into poison. Then we become unhappy. So it is not, first of all, it is just like a very minute, it is not very big pleasure. And the second is it is just short lasting. It is just very temporary. And after it, comes pain and it comes suffering. So if we want to really taste the real pleasure, the real enjoyer, enjoyment, then we have to change our psychology. And the, the change of the, our psychology is we have to change our attitude from the attitude which we have at present. I am the Lord, I'm the master, I'm the enjoyer, and everything is here for me to enjoy. Towards, I am just a little tiny spark, spiritual, divine spark, who is a servant of the supreme absolute truth, the supreme soul, Sri Krishna. And then try to live accordingly by dedicating our life to his service and to his pleasure. And this is something that brings unlimited joy and unlimited happiness, as all the personalities of Godhead are experiencing, so we can also experience it. And how do we actually learn all this? How do we actually come to the point that we can change this psychology and really obtain this proper psychology of a real enjoyer? through the process of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is that spiritual path which actually awakens this, our natural propensity of love, devotion, and servitude towards the Supreme Lord. And with it also the supreme enjoyment, love, and happiness comes forth. So thank you very much for watching this class. And if you have any questions, please write down in the commentaries. And I would be very, very happy if you subscribe to this channel for more interesting classes like this one.